So here I've got a very nice problem from a very old Putnam exam. This is from the year 1939. So maybe if you know, post what the first year for the Putnam was in the comments. So let's see what we've got. So given a cubic polynomial, x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c with integer coefficients, that's what I mean by saying it's in z adjoint x, and it has roots r, s, t, we want to find three new integers, which I'll call capital A, B, C, so that this new polynomial, x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c, where those are all capital, has roots r cubed, s cubed, and t cubed. And I guess maybe it goes without saying, although it's carefully written into the problem, but I've left it out, that capital A, B, and C should depend on little a, B, and C. Okay, so let's maybe get to it. So taking this with the fact that the roots are r, s, t, that tells us that this equation, x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, has solutions given by r, s, t. And by solutions, I mean if we plug x equals r, x equals s, or x equals t into this, this equation is satisfied. But now we can make a little bit of a transformation. We can replace x with the cube root of x, and let's see what that does to the roots. So that's going to give me a new equation. It's no longer a polynomial equation. It's like a radical equation. We've got x plus ax to the two-thirds is how I'll write it, plus bx to the one-third plus c equals zero has solutions r cubed, s cubed, and t cubed. And how do we know it's r cubed, s cubed, and t cubed? If we plug r cubed, s cubed, or t cubed into the second equation, it will collapse to the first equation where r, s, and t have been plugged in. So that means it has been satisfied. But we've got a problem here. This is no longer a polynomial equation. It does have the correct roots, but it's not a polynomial equation. So what we need to do is manipulate this until it's a polynomial equation. Equation. Well, obviously we could start cubing things to get rid of these cube roots, but we should take advantage of the fact that x and c are already in the correct form. In other words, they are polynomial type objects. So maybe we'll move them to the other side of the equation. So let's do that. We'll have ax to the two thirds plus bx to the one third is equal to minus x minus c. So that means that this equation also has solutions given by our r cubed, s cubed, t cubed, because it's a simple like reorganization of our second equation. And now we can maybe cube both sides of this and see what happens. Okay, so let's cube this left-hand side and cube the right-hand side. Okay, so let's get to multiplying these out, which we'll do with just a simple binomial expansion. So multiplying this one out, we'll have a cubed x squared, that's this term squared, and then plus three a squared b x to the five-thirds. So that'll be x to the two-thirds squared times x to the one-third. Then we'll have plus three a b squared x to the four-thirds. So that's x to the two-thirds times x to the one-third squared. And then finally, b cubed times x. Then we'll do the same kind of thing on the right-hand side of the equation. So that'll give us minus x cubed minus three c x squared minus three c squared x minus c cubed. Okay, so it looks still problematic. We have polynomial term here, here, and then all on the right-hand side, but these terms right here look like they still include rational exponents. But we'll see that we can simplify those. So let's first factor some stuff out. So we can factor a 3ab times x out of this. But if we do that, we're left with a times x to the two-thirds plus b times x to the one-third. And that's actually really good news because from this step up here, we see that this object is equal to minus x minus c. So that means we can replace all of this right here with three times a times b times x times minus x minus c. Okay, so let's maybe get rid of this and we'll start at that point.
into a new polynomial with roots r cubed, s cubed, and t cubed. And now we just need to clean this thing up. So let's move all of this right-hand side to the left-hand side and then start combining like terms. So we'll have x cubed, that's like our highest order term. And then let's see what our x squared term is. So we'll have a from here, and then we'll have a minus 3ab from this term hitting this, okay? And then we'll have a plus 3 C from this guy over here moving to the left hand side of the equation. So that's our coefficient of x squared. So now let's see what our coefficient of x is. We'll play the same kind of game. We'll have a minus 3abc from this multiplying through here. We'll have a plus b cubed. Oh, and I just realized this should have been a cubed, so let's add that in there. And then we'll have a plus 3c squared. So that's our coefficient of x. We get that last term from moving this over. Now let's see what our constant term is. Well, that's actually pretty easy. We can just move this c squared over and we'll get plus capital or plus c cubed equals zero. So we can extract all of this into capital A, all of this into capital B, and then finally, c cubed is equal to capital C. And that finishes off what the problem is asking us to find. And that's a good place to stop.